The striker hunt continues as Forrest now search the Bundesliga for another one. But not just a striker, another central midfielder as well. Welcome to your transfer news. Good morning, good evening, or good night. Hope you guys are doing well, and welcome to your latest Nottingham Forest transfer news. In today's video, we will tell you about yet another striker that has been heavily linked with Nottingham Forest. And on top of that, a young and upcoming midfielder that's sorted after by the likes of Man City, Manchester United, and all the major clubs. Can Forest have a say in the matter? If you're enjoying the content, if you're enjoying the early transfer news, please don't forget. To hit that like button, subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And let's kick this one off with this new striker that has been linked to Forest. All right, so Forest are hunting in the Bundesliga and they've come across Marvin Duxch. Marvin Duxch, who plays for Werther Bremer, he's 29 years old. He's six foot two, completely right footed, and has scored five goals in 10 appearances. And I don't know. I don't know is my answer on this one. Why? Because he kind of reminds me a little bit of Chris Wood because he is lacking in pace. He is a good finisher, loves to finesse the ball into the far corner usually, has some strength about him. But is he the style of player we need who can replace Taiwo in his times of injury? Or is he more a number two to Chris Wood? And that is my question. And with a cost of 15 million euros, which is what, 12 and a half, 13 million pounds, it's going to come at a price. And a price that I think may be too much, especially given that he's 29. Now, 29 isn't exactly ancient in football these days, but Forrest really need to be, if they're looking for a profile player like this, have to get someone who's younger. I would rather we recruited a potential, an up-and-comer like Leonardo that we spoke about the other day, rather than go and spend 15-odd million euros on a player who's probably by the age of 31 going to have been like past his peak. But is this just because we need a temporary solution, a solution that isn't someone who's going to the AFCON in January? Is this a little bit of panic from Nottingham Forest showing the interest in him? Now, is he a good striker? Yes, he is. He's just been called up to the German national team. Now, that in itself isn't exactly a glowing endorsement with the trials and tribulations they're having. He just made his debut against Austria, where Germany, Germany lost 2-0 to them. But I just, I don't like the profile of the player. Nothing against him. I'm sure he will score goals. But I think we need a more dynamic striker. A striker who's going to have that pace, that physicality, Honestly, a Taiwo 2.0 who just doesn't get injured would be ideal for me. But he is linked. He can score goals. I am a fan of the Bundesliga. I do believe they've got gems in there and we've uncovered loads of them. I mean, look at Nia Kate, look at Mangala, just to name a couple that we've got from there. So it can work. That transition from the Bundesliga over to the Premier League isn't that big of a deal. We see plenty of it happening. But... It's the age thing and the pace for me. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen quite a bit of him. He's never really stood out in my mind as, oh, I'd love to see him at Nottingham Forest. But maybe you guys have differing opinions on him. Have you seen him play? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on him. But what we can derive from this is 100% on Forest priority list for January will be a striker. And it's just going to be a question of who and can Forrest use the muscle to get themselves a striker ahead of potentially other Premier League clubs who will be looking and maybe other European powerhouses um, across the main five leagues. This one for me is a no. I'll be honest with you guys. I always am. I think we can do better than this. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Alrighty then, let's move on to our second story. And this one may surprise a few of you because it did me. Forrest are linked with a central midfield player from the French League at Strasbourg. The 19-year-old uh, Habib Diare, who is 
a talent. He's one of those up and coming players who is being looked at by major clubs. You're talking the likes of Man City, Man United, etc. I think Wolves had a 21 million bid rejected for him. So he's going to come at a cost. He's one of those players that is like an all round complete midfielder. I use the word loosely, but I'm just describing him who can win a tackle, but they can burst in towards the box, kind of drive with the ball forward and create chances. He's played 42 times for Strasbourg, scored two goals there. And he's just really a destroyer and a creator and a progressor of the ball. Now, this one does confuse me a little bit, but it also makes sense. I know I'm contradicting myself, but hear me out. This player reminds me a lot of a Danilo, a lot of a Nunes who just went from Wolves to Manchester uh, to Man City. Those type of players is what he reminds me of. But I do think we've already got that style of player. I think he's more a Danilo than he is a Dominguez, for example. And we've already got a midfield that seems quite settled in Dominguez, Sangare and Mangala. And then we still have backup on top of that with Danilo, who may actually be a first team choice. We'll have to wait and see how that develops. Then you got obviously Yates in there. So there are a lot of talented players currently at Nottingham Forest. Would this strengthen the competition or would this cause headaches? You know, would this mean, for example, if Forest were to get him, would Santos be going back to Chelsea in January? Because how can we accommodate for him as well? But I like this player. I like his style. I like the way he can break between the lines. But I do think he's another Danilo. Now, would Danilo be in a bit of an injury hit as well? He's been out well a couple of times this season. He was out for a little bit last season. Is this the type of player we should be spending well over 20 million for? And we know it will cost that much because, like I mentioned, Wolves had a £21 million bid rejected. But I do like him and I do like the ambition of the club if this link is concrete and something is going to happen with it. And progressing from the French League to the Premier League, again, could be a bit of a challenge. But what you find with those physical players from any of the major European leagues, they tend to not struggle too much when they make the switch. So I am kind of for this. But I'm just not sure how he fits into the current setup. Because at the moment, it feels like we're going to play like a 4 6 0 formation with a lot of central midfielders in the team. So, my problem with this isn't the player. I think he's a fantastic player. I guess the right word I'd use here is priority. And our priority needs to be not just an attacker. I mean, we're linked with Ducks, as I just mentioned, which isn't too bad. But we also need attacking wingers, left wing and right wing as well. Now, the window hasn't even opened. So we're, I'm getting way ahead of myself here. There's still plenty of time. After all, Forrest can sign seven players in one day. Not a major problem for us whatsoever. But 20 to 25 million on Diare probably will take money out of the budget on other players. And that's my concern. I would rather we were prioritizing a 30 million pound striker, something like that, and then bring Dennis back as a backup winger, for example. And maybe even Josh Bowler, who knows? I hear that he's doing good things currently on loan. I don't know if we can do that. Maybe there's clauses in the loan contract that won't allow us to do that. But either way, Forrest will still need to recruit up front more so than they do in midfield. This to me feels like a luxury item. It's a luxury item I would like. Don't get me wrong. I will be hypocritical about it. But for the shape and balance of the team currently, I think the priorities lie elsewhere. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, let's move on to our third story. And this I was expecting to happen. And it sounds like it is. Nottingham Forest will be filing to sue Everton for their breach of FFP. And it's not Forest just doing this. It's the likes of Leeds, Southampton, Burnley, and no doubt one or two more who have been impacted by this. Why is this happening? Well, Forrest, you could argue, were not affected by Everton in terms of relegation last season. And yes, Everton have been in breach of FFP. But if you think about it logically, Forrest may have lost out on a couple of million from this. Why? Because we drew twice with Everton last year. It cost us four points. Four more points would have pushed us a couple more places up the league last year and generated more income as you get paid the higher up you go in the league. 
So I don't think Forest Case is that strong, if I'm being honest with you. I think the likes of maybe Burnley, you could look at Southampton, Leeds, Leicester, etc. Have a good, strong case to put forward. But really, what is going to happen? It's not like they're going to relegate Everton and switch them back in with, say, Southampton or Leicester. That's just never going to happen. This is, if anything, will end up in compensation. But I'm not convinced it will happen. We've seen this happen a few times in the past, I think, with the likes of Middlesbrough. So, will Forrest pursue this one? I think it's one of those things where, well, it's worth a punt. Put your name in the hat, see if it sticks. If it sticks, you come out with some money. Obviously, there will be legal costs um, to tag along with all of this. But Forrest are filing with the rest of them. Could they do this as a class action suit? I just think I'd enjoy seeing Everton undergo some more misery. I think it's quite funny, the entitlement they think they have to the Premier League. So I'm all up for it, and I'm sure Marinakis and co. have fully considered what the outcomes could be and the cost behind it. But what are your thoughts on this in the FFP scenario? Do you think Forrest are right to file a claim against Everton, or do you think we should let sleeping dogs lie, lie even? Get your thoughts in down below. That brings you up to date with your Forest transfer news and general news as well. If you've made it this far in the video, chuck in the letters FFP in the comments so I know that you got here. And make sure as well you've hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And we'll see you on the next video. Come on, you Reds.